So if you watch my previous videos, you probably have seen some of these, you know, tooltip. I don't have the alpha yet, but you can notice that a lot of the Covenant abilities, I want to say 90% of Covenant abilities, have a wording similar to this. You're able to heal this many members or DPS this many members. Now, this makes sense because the Covenant abilities are not spec-based. A lot of them, like, for example, if you play a Druid, you have the Balance Druid, you have Herald, you have Guardian. So if they make Covenant abilities, those Covenant abilities should represent all of those specs. So you have to word them in a way that's going to be like, you know, you heal this many targets or you can DPS this many targets. But inherently, this means that healers, a majority of healers out there, can now use these abilities to DPS when needed. So you're kind of hitting, you know, two birds with one stone in terms of what Blizzard is trying to do here, which in my opinion is to give healers a lot more choices in terms of when to deal damage or when to heal. So you can see things like, for example, I think Adaptive Swarm is a very good example of this. Commander Swarm that heals or deals shadow damage over 12 seconds to a target and increases effectiveness of, of your periodic effects on them. So basically you can put it on a tank and your hots heal more or put it on an enemy and your dots deal more. Upon expiration travels to a new target within 25 yards, alternating between friend and foe. So basically this is... To some extent, some of the Covenant abilities can be viewed as passive DPS. Now, what's the example of passive DPS? What is it? What, what the hell? Why do I even care this as a healer? Because in the last couple expansions, especially since the introduction of Mythic Plus and Legion, you can see that healers have been forced to do more damage and more damage. This was really prevalent in Mythic Plus because there's a lot of downtime in Mythic Plus. Now, it kind of came into effect. Again, it was always in raiding as well, but it really made a huge impact in... BFA. In BFA, you saw that the healer balance, or at least a lot of the videos that I do, healer balance, what makes a healer good, it's not only the healing, it's not only the utility, but it's also the passive damage. And by passive damage, I mean a healer that can do damage in order to increase their healing. So you have things like Holy Paladins, where they have to use Crusader Strike to get resets on Holy Shock or lower the cooldown on Holy Shock. And Holy Shock is going to be your main healing ability because it's going to leave Glimmer. So all of a sudden hitting the boss is going to increase your healing. So that's what I mean by passive DPS. And this works in the same way that Discipline Priest works. This works in the same way that Mistweavers have kind of emerged with this fist weaving build where you know you're using your teachings of the monastery stacks to reset your rising sunky cooldown. And in order to do that, and if you do that, you can extend your hots. Now there's been a lot of controversy about haste fist weaving the nerves that are coming the nerves that have been paused and there's probably going to be some significant changes in the next couple of weeks in terms of what's happening to them but that's what i mean by passive dps passive dps has been a big huge factor for top end world guilds killing bosses because there is a lot of downtime in raids and mythic plus where a healer can do damage now when coming into shadowlands i had a lot of different expectations or i was really not sure about what's going to happen First of all, there was a lot of talk about is healer DPS going to be a thing in Shadowlands? Are the three healers right now that can do passive DPS? You could to some extent could say two of them because they've been meta for a long time. But are those healers going to be able to do passive DPS? Can they still heal as good? Because a lot of people were really down because you play a Holy Paladin, you play a Disciplined Priest. These healers can do a lot of HPS. At the same time, they have a lot of passive DPS. And at the same time, they have damage reduction cooldowns. Which means that other healers who have to make a distinct choice between, hey, am I gonna heal or DPS right now? Because they can't. They can't do passive DPS. Resto Druids maybe can maintain Moonfire and Sunfire, but it's quite mana intensive. But if they want to go DPS, they have to go either Kitty Form or Solo Wrath. That's going to be all you do for that point of time. You're just dealing DPS. Solo Wrath is not going to increase your healing. Sunfire, Moonfire is not going to build up. I don't know. It's not going to increase your healing in any way. In the same way that Holy Priest, in the same way that, for example, Resto Shamans can go that Igneous Potential build and put Flame Shocks on a boss and do Lava Burst, but that's going to do absolutely nothing for their healing. When you compare it to the other side, where Holy Paladin, you know, Discipline Priest, Mistweaver, have it way different. And basically, with Shadowlands right now, you can see that Blizzard is going all out in healer DPS. They're kind of doubling down on healers having multiple ways of providing dps like i mentioned adaptive swarm is somewhat of a passive dps ability if you look at now monks is a the only case that i'm kind of unsure where they're going with a lot of the monk covenant abilities are spec specific 
you can see mentioning here Mistweaver, Brewmaster, Windwalker. You can see here Rising Sunky, Keg Smash, Essence Font. And all of a sudden, I'm not sure what they're doing this because the Monk is the only class that I've read in terms of healers that has this breakdown of specs. So maybe if you choose a specific Covenant ability as a Mistweaver, you can only heal. But this is very different from other abilities. Like, for example, Paladin, you have uh, Ashen Hallow. Hallows the target area, dealing damage, shadow damage split among enemies and restoring health split, split among injured allies. So you just place this and you deal damage and heal. Passive DPS. Uh, you can also look at this. Vanquisher's Hammer. Holy. Throws a hammer at your target, dealing shadow damage and empowering your next World of Glory to automatically trigger Light of Dawn. So, for, so the next World of Glory spender is also going to trigger Light of Dawn after you damage an enemy passive dps they're doubling down on this if you look at priest as well you can see boon of ascended drop on the power of ascended for 10 seconds granting access to ascended nova replacing discipline and holy smite with ascended blast and increasing your movement speed by 50 percent upon expiration releases an ascendant eruption explode for arcane damage to all enemies this is probably going to be capped because a lot of the a lot of the damage abilities have been capped in shadowlands and healing, you have to see this, and healing all allies within 15 yards. Again, to some extent, you could say this, this is, you know, passive. And you can see this everywhere. If you look at the shamans, you can see Vesper Totem is the exact same thing. Summon a top of your next three damage abilities. Uh, three damage spells or abilities will cause a totem to radiate arcane damage up to six enemies. Again, capped. And your next three healing spells will heal up to six allies near a totem. And then this is probably the funniest one because I feel like this is a great example of what Blizzard is trying to achieve. Transfer life force over to eight enemies in a targeted area, dealing damage, dealing nature damage every 0.5 seconds for three seconds. Uh, pressing fate transfusion again within 10 seconds will release 70 75% of all damage from fate transfusion, healing up to eight allies near yourself. So the only way for you to heal is to deal damage. I feel this is a great showcase of where Blizzard is going. Blizzard wants healers to really pay attention more to DPS. And besides this, we have to look at the DPS toolkits of all healers. And I feel Holy Priest is a great example here because I feel Holy Priest, for the largest part of BFA, has been regarded as one of the weakest Mythic Plus healers, as the healer that really didn't contribute all that much in terms of damage. They didn't have a big DPS toolkit. And guess what? They're getting like three new DPS abilities. Their DPS toolkit is getting doubled. Now, all of a sudden, you will have Shadow World Pain as Holy Priest. Not only that, you have Shadow World Death, which again, Shadow World Death will also damage you. It's relatively long cooldown. And you also will have Mind Blast, which again, somewhat has a long cooldown. But your DPS toolkit as a Holy Priest has doubled. You could argue the fact that these are not passive DPS tools. You have to make your mind about, am I going to DPS here? To some extent, you can also look at all the other healers. So first of all, Resto Shaman is getting quite a few abilities in general and quite a few of them are going to be dps you have things like searing totem flame tongue weapon now there is going to be i'm gonna go off topic a little bit they're getting about like five new abilities you have things like uh, manatai totem water shield you have so many new abilities returning you're probably going to have a new action bar of abilities on top of the fact that you're also getting two new covenant abilities one might argue the fact that Resto Shamans did not need on pruning, but rather more meaningful choices in terms of their mythic plus shortfalls, in terms of tank healing, in terms of tank cooldowns and things like that. Because, god damn man, you're gonna need a lot of keybinds to keep track of all the new Resto Shaman abilities coming true. I'd love to hear your opinions on this as well. But generally speaking, Resto Shamans are not getting a whole lot in terms of the new damage abilities. If you look at things like Holy Paladins, Holy Paladins, besides the current abilities, you're getting Shield of Righteousness as a DPS spender. Now, Shield of Righteousness is really weird as a spender because not only it deals damage, but also it gives you armor. So I'm not sure what the percentage of DPS is going to be put into the DPS component because, quite frankly, I don't really care about the armor component. I'd rather have a Holy Paladin who can use their build up Holy Powers in order to spend it on a pure DPS ability because I want to pump damage. I don't really care about the armor. In terms of other healers, like for example, Resto Druid is not getting a whole new set of abilities. Instead of getting a talent, Heart of the Wild, which is going to directly buff their affinities, Feral Affinity or Balance Affinity, whichever is going to be the best. Now, Resto Druid does not need new DPS abilities because if you play Resto Druid, 
you know that their DPS toolkit is far larger than a lot of other classes. Now, your base toolkit is Sunfire, Moonfire, Solarath, which is very, very easy. One, two, three. A lot of healers have this one, two, three type of DPS cooldowns, which is fine. But if you pick Feral Affinity or Balance Affinity, especially Feral Affinity because it's the best in BFA right now, you know that you have all this Rip, Rake, Ferocious buy type of thing. So all of a sudden, your toolkit is far bigger than other healers, so they don't need new DPS abilities. So Blizzard saw that and they implemented Hard the Wild, which is going to buff your DPS if you pick that specific affinity, which makes sense. In terms of Mistweavers, you'll see that they're getting some weird Covenant breakdowns in terms of specs, which is not really happening to other classes. But in terms of talents, they're getting way of the crane with no mana cost in terms of the talent choices, but it's going to be two minute cooldown and, you know, spinning crane kick from what I've heard, what I've seen is getting a target cap. In terms of healer DPS, you can see where Blizzard is going. They're giving you a lot more options in terms of what to do at what specific situation. So is that good or bad? This is what I want to hear from you. In my honest opinion, I'm going to tell you my honest opinion. I honestly feel that what Blizzard is doing right now is very, very satisfactory to me. I enjoy healer DPS. I think it's a huge part of my gameplay right now. And World of Warcraft is not the first game to do it. Final Fantasy has been doing something similar, similar to what Blizzard is approaching in Shadowlands for a very, very long time. So it's been done before. And the sad fact, or for a lot of people who might not enjoy this, the sad fact is, is that it's very hard not to incorporate healer DPS into this game because of one small thing, downtime. Downtime is a huge, huge component where you have nothing else to do. In Classic, that happens all the time. You sometimes might not have anything to do for a long time. And it's boring. I, In my honest opinion, it's really, really boring. So how do you fill in that time? You DPS, you help out to bring down the boss, bring down the mob. Now, there is a big there is a big question about, you know, I can't really DPS on poke scenarios because everyone's taking damage. I can't uh, DPS in a raid scenarios because there's so much healing. Yeah, that's going to happen. There are fights where there's constant AUE damage. There are, you know, dungeons or mythic plus dungeons or mythic plus groups where there's going to be so much damage taken because people stand and stuff and you can't DPS. That's obviously acceptable, but if you join a decent group for mythic plus i want to say i'm going to try out numbers randomly i want to say that 30 percent or 40 percent of that dungeon can be downtime or can be your downtime and you can spend time to dps that leaves a lot of time to prioritize your dps and now i know that there's going to be a lot of people out there who absolutely hate dps will be like hey i joined to be a healer i created this character on this character creation screen in order to heal i just want to heal why am i supposed to dps and again I feel like the only way they could have done something like this, a lot of people have proposed this. What if you remove DPS abilities? What if you put a, for example, the three classes that can do passive DPS? You have your Discipline Priest, you have your Holy Paladin, you have your Mistweaver Monk. They can do passive DPS, but they should heal for less. That could also be an option. And then all of a sudden, hey, I have an option of playing Restoration Jude who can't do passive DPS in raid scenarios, but I'm going to heal more than the class that can't do. This was another suggestion that a lot of people have kind of put out in there another suggestion was that hey what if we make raids in mythic plus that you need to heal so much that you can't even deal damage like for example think of it in mythic plus a grievous affix that never drops off that's the only affix that i can think of that would mean that you cannot spend any time to dps or it would be very hard for you to use that global cooldown for dps an affix that constantly takes down and you need to heal people you know what would happen if Blizzard would implement that in Shadowlands or something like that? People would complain. The masses will go onto the forums, onto Blizzard official forums, and they'll complain nonstop about, hey, this is so hard, I'm running out of mana, I can't heal, this is too difficult. While some other people would be like, hey, this is great. Now all of a sudden, you know, I really need to optimize my healing spells. I need to make sure who I heal. So you can't please anybody by this. I feel that the solution of creating content where you need to heal, where you need to do so much healing that you can't DPS is not going to be, it's not going to work. Having every boss and raid doing that much damage, it's not going to create a varied boss design or a varied mythic plus design or affix design. So I feel where Blizzard is going with healer DPS is the, probably the perfect solution. I think healers should have the toolkit to DPS. I feel every healer should have the toolkit to DPS. Now, another question is whether healers should have passive DPS or DPS abilities that increase your healing. Should every healer have that? 
damage reduction cooldowns from those specific healers is also a very big problem because it's not really being addressed in Shadowlands either. Those three healers still have those damage or those two healers mainly, Discipline Priest and Holy Paladin, they still have those damage reduction cooldowns. They can still do passive DPS, but you can see where Shadowlands or where Blizzard is going. Every healer is getting Covenant ability that allows you to heal or DPS. Every healer is almost getting additional DPS abilities to press. To some extent, Resto Shamans might be getting too many abilities. We'll have to see about that. But how do you feel about this? How do you feel about healers having more options to DPS? Are you a type of player that enjoys DPS? Are you a type of player that hates this change and never gonna play World of Warcraft again? Because I enjoy that, that downtime where I don't have to do anything. Don't get me wrong. You can always get yourself into a Mythic Plus group where no matter what you do, you, people keep taking damage and things like that and you can't DPS. That always happens. Pugging is a dangerous environment out there. But I feel if you get a decent group, one of my favorite healers right now in Mythic Plus is Restoration Druid. I absolutely love the fact that you can weave in your hots and your dots and your bleeds and optimize your DPS. I love going Igneous Potential and Resto Shaman in Mythic Plus and trying to do as much damage as possible. It honestly has opened up a new gameplay for me. And I feel that players who are more veteran to the game, I think they will enjoy this change. But again, I really want to hear your opinions on this because I know for a fact there's going to be a lot of people who agree with this and disagree with this. But again, this is a discussion video. Let me know how you feel about where Shadowlands or the direction of Shadowlands healers heading to. How you feel about this and I'll see you in my next video.